An aquatic mechanical design presentation. The site visit to Casa Tranquilidad was focused upon these previous outlined objectives. A. Identify the existing conditions. B. Consider changes for making improvements. C. Make recommendations that provide greater sanitation reliability. D. Provide suggestions for grief-free pool maintenance by existing management capabilities. E. Determine what a reasonable expense is. F. Stay in tune with a preference for salt chlorine pool via utilizing a generator that uses a brine tank and pH. G. Introduce the possibility of using salt and UV technologies. H. Establish the retrofit desires for using different systems that meet your criteria. The project consists of a large residential vanishing edge swimming pool and spa inclusive of other water feature elements such as the lazy river, water slide, and lower pool. My efforts at identifying the existing conditions started in the equipment room in order to become acquainted with what had been accomplished from the original construction efforts. The equipment room measures approximately 14 foot long by 12 foot wide by 11 foot high and upon entering the room, the automation controls and subpanels are located on the left. In a clockwise rotation, the spa filtration jet pump number 8 is the first pump on the upper deck, followed by the pool jet pumps number 5, 6, and 7. Continuing along the upper deck, the lower pool filter pump number 4 can be found, and next, the main pool filter pumps 1, 2, and 3. The main pool heater number one and main pool heater number two rest against the back wall on the upper deck and the lower pool heater and spa heater are located against the side wall on the upper deck. The piping is complemented with a series of isolation and check valves which will be discussed further in this report. The spa filter is located on the floor and turning counterclockwise, the lower pool filter is adjacent to this together with the other main pool filters 1, 2, and 3. Lazy River pumps 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 are located against the back wall on the floor also. And here are the other two main pool filter, number 1 and 2, previously mentioned but were not viewable as of yet in this video. Power to each pump is distributed by individual circuit breakers which are numerically labeled accordingly to each pump. The circuit breakers are rated for each pump's amp load and these are located inside subpanel A together with the circuit breakers for the automation controllers. The main pool has three dedicated whisper flow 3 horsepower pumps which are capable of delivering 140 gallons per minute at 60 head feet. These pumps are manifolded together having a 6 inch influent or suction side supply and are manifolded together at the return to a 4 inch effluent or return side discharge. In taking a closer look at these pumps one can see that the operating temperature of pump number 1 is 133 degrees, pump number 2 is 142 degrees, and pump number 3 is 110 degrees. Also, in assuming the published manufacturer's flow rates shown on the pump curve data, one can see that one possible influence for these pumps to be running hot corresponds to effluent and influent pipe sizes being out of balance with the industry standards for a maximum velocity of 6 feet per second on suction lines and 8 feet per second on return lines in accordance with the Virginia Graham Baker Act safety standards. Accomplishing these standards requires a collaboration between the pumping system's capability, the piping system's flow rate velocities, and the distance of separation between the influent pipe's termination point and the grate cover.
As well, the selection of the drain covers must also correspond to the area of open grade space that will not allow a velocity greater than 1.5 feet per second at the prescribed influent flow rate for the dedicated pipe. Filtration specifications. There are three Clear and Clean Plus 520 square foot cartridge filters that are plumbed into one common influent 6 inch and 4 inch effluent manifold. These manifolds connect to the filters with 2 inch piping that cause considerable restriction at the combined pumping flow rate. The combined maximum flow rate for all three filters is 450 gallons per minute, three times 150 gallons per minute each. The maximum pumping flow rate for all three pumps is 420 gallons per minute, three at 140 gallons per minute each, which is in balance. But the friction loss characteristics for the two inch pipe size is excessive due to the hydraulic head losses at the flow rate velocity. This high velocity hydraulic head loss condition is exasperated due to the length of horizontal and vertical pipe runs, 90 degree elbow changes in direction, isolation valves, check valves, and other factors in the equipment room that are inhibiting higher flows to run through smaller pipe sizes. A clean filter operating pressure of plus 20 PSI in combination with the previous influences exemplifies the results of obtaining a lower flow rate while using more energy. The excessive heat that was measured at the filtering system pump motors also reflects a loss in energy efficiency and longevity to the pumping system. In considering improvements, I've started with considering the water volumes for each vessel. The pool volume is estimated at 75,000 gallons, the spa at 950 gallons, and the lower pool at 7,500 gallons. The vessel volumes are converted here into the time span turnover rate required for commercial swimming pool standards. Based on these findings, it would be my opinion that the electrical energy load of 45 amps that is currently being consumed in driving the three pump motors for the main pool's filtration function could be reduced by one pump and one filter. This would result in 2 times 140 GPM or 280 GPM flow rate, which is 72 gallons per minute above the required flow rate for the 6-hour turnover. This would also reduce the excessive velocities in the influent and effluent piping network, but would still require some 2 inch to 3 inch retrofit upsizing of the piping in the equipment room. The main focus being to provide greater longevity to the pumps and better electrical energy consumptive use efficiency. The cartridge filters that are currently in operation require periodic cleaning and disassembly in order to access the cartridge elements that are located inside the filter. This process requires isolating the pool from the equipment due to the equipment room's lower elevation of minus 10 feet. This also requires turning off an array of influent and affluent valves to the system before disassembling the filters, otherwise it would result in flooding the equipment room. It is suspect that this has happened in the past based upon the amount of rust and corrosion exhibited on the metal racking in just a short span of the five years since the pool was completed. In another attempt to arrest the energy stealing bandit that is living in the equipment room, the next suggestive change would be to switch to sand filters. Besides the better flow characteristics of sand filtration, the ease of maintenance and replacement cost over time will have an ROI and pay dividends. More efficient also means easier maintainability, as these types of filters only require turning off the filter pump, turning a valve, and turning back on the pump for about two minutes every few months. The ease of this cleaning operation also increases the likelihood that it will be performed on a regular basis. There are four 400,000 BTU heaters located in the equipment room, and each has an intake and an exhaust airflow requirement. More importantly, the combined total of exhaust poses serious health risk if not vented properly. Here is a diagram of the manufacturer's recommendation for a single indoor heater, although in providing venting of two or more heaters, it is noted to contact the factory. 
Carbon monoxide can't be seen, can't be smelled, can't be heard, but it can be stopped, and the potential for CO poisoning is a very serious issue. It is our suggestion to contact the Raypack factory about whether or not this installation is following the manufacturer's installation guidelines. It is my opinion that the equipment room could use some installation upgrades that would provide greater longevity and will make maintaining the pools and spa less cumbersome. In this example, the gas valve and drip leg are per the manufacturer's recommendations, whereas the existing does not make provisions for condensation buildup in the pipe, nor is the proper copper wire being utilized for bonding. In another example, the existing 2-inch true union ball valves are not serviceable and have a smaller inside diameter that results in greater flow restriction. The 2-way and 3-way isolation valves exhibited here come in 3-inch diameter and have fully serviceable gaskets and seals. Their seals and gaskets are also rated for exposure to a swimming pool's chemical environment. In other examples of improvements, Flow meters and pressure gauges can be added so that maintenance personnel will have something that can allow them to monitor the system's performances. One huge obstacle to properly maintaining the system is getting someone to keep the pump baskets clean. With eight upper baskets and six lower baskets, cleaning each one requires finding the correct valve to isolate the pool so that the equipment room doesn't flood. Needless to say, this is unnecessarily cumbersome and very time-consuming. The solution would be to provide one large strainer for each filtering system, main pool, lower pool, and spa, and position these where they're easiest to clean and quick to isolate. By using butterfly-style valves, the pool can be quickly isolated and baskets clean. This modification would involve a change-out of some pumping hardware and repiping, but once again, it would pay dividends over time. Besides the pumping, filtering, and plumbing inefficiencies, we were told that there have been some other issues involving the control system's operational functionality. In viewing the electrical subpanel, I've observed missing cover plates and a spider web of exposed wires that could be a source of bad connections. This would require some time to diagnose and solve or as an option, a retro update wireless web accessible hardware system upgrading might be better use of time and money spent. During the past six years since the pool was constructed, technology has been on the march and artificial intelligence has made a better connection with desires as a fully vested partner with convenience. The latest is Pentair's IntelliCenter that's introduced Alexa to Mr. Poole's Smart Command Center. This 21st century capability interfaces with smartphone technology and allows access to an array of menus and programmable operational functions, as well as monitoring and adjusting the pool of water chemistry. Being able to monitor the pool of water chemistry and routinely make adjustments remotely can remove one more crucial action that's necessary in ensuring that things get handled correctly. In order to head off common industry practices that result in rapid acidic destruction of your system's internals, a better system must be put in place and, equally important, remotely monitored. In my opinion, increasing the TDS levels to 4,000 parts per million in order to mask the use of chlorine while still using chlorine, well, it isn't really in your best interest and one can see the destructive nature of salty water in the equipment room and the cumbersome task of performing regular maintenance on the current layout. Having started my career in the swimming pool maintenance side of things years ago while working for my father's pool business, the ease of maintenance has always lingered in my psyche as an influence for how to achieve the best results from my design efforts. Practical delegation of the responsibility for performing the duties of maintenance must go hand in hand with how things lay out in an equipment room. Priority must be given for how the maintenance operations are to be conducted and how equipment is to be serviced if reliability is to have reasonable expectations. Incorporating new technologies would suffer the same plight as the current system if operations and maintenance procedures are not established and followed. 
Thus, in developing a plan for how a new and revised equipment room would lay out, it must also organize an outline that explains the task that would be involved in implementing each maintenance procedure in order to establish what is to be done and who will be delegated the responsibility for doing it. After writing the script for a more successful result, then a price can go under the magnifying glass for what can be understood for the fair value in the price. Everything eventually wears out, and when immersed into harsh environments and not properly maintained, things wear out much faster. This report is focused upon making you the beneficiary of experience and knowledge that's been acquired over generations. It will be your decision to see if my suggestions make sense for your expectations. New technology suggestions focused upon providing you long-term solutions will not be inexpensive. And until decisions are made for what is to be made inclusive, the cost can't be determined. In retaining me as your swimming pool consultant, part of my duties will be to incrementally familiarize you with an estimated cost for each of these new technologies and a value for orchestrating and directing the retrofitting to the existing system. In summarizing, on the basis of information provided in this video report, if it is your desire to move forward with implementing these improvements, I will prepare a design consulting proposal quotation. Just let me know if it is your desire to move forward with these suggestions. Thank you.